Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about sound diffusers. How do they work? Two main categories of treatment that we use in small room acoustics. Sound absorption treatment, sound diffusion. There's hybrids, of course. Uh, we have hybrids in, in our product line. Our QDA series has diffusion and absorption, both in the same technology. So you can combine the two, and there's lots of uh, products out there that do it. Sound absorption, sound diffusion. That's it. Those are the two tools that we have. Now, sound absorption is broken down into two main categories, low frequency pressure management and middle and high frequency reflection management. Two different phenomena, two different types of treatment. Companies will tell you all the time you can use one treatment for both. You cannot. It's different parts of the laws of physics. They're just saying that to get you to buy products. Quadratic diffusion is the only true diffusion. Why? Because it's predictable and consistent, and it has a predictable and consistent frequency response. If there's anything we need more of in acoustical treatment is predictability and consistency, because you're chasing pressure and reflection issues through the whole room. You've got to have predictability and consistency in the performance of the treatment technology that you use to solve the problem. If you don't, if the treatment you're using isn't predictable and consistent, what are you doing? You're chasing your tail. You're using tactics without a strategy, for one, and the tactics aren't predictable and consistent. Wow, what a waste of time and energy and money. Quadratic diffusion, the only true diffuser. Other technologies are really just sound redirection device. You've seen this? That's a sound redirection device. A diffuser has a series of wells, different depths, energy enters, comes back out, all divided into a smaller array of energy. So big, big energy in, small energy out. The the definition of diffusion. Series of wells or troughs. Depth of each well is based on a formula, a modulus formula that we use to calculate. And the depth of each well is based on quarter wavelength. The width is half wavelength. So you end up with a frequency response, a low frequency response, a higher frequency response based on the width, a lower frequency response based on the depth. Quarter width diffusers have a frequency response just like a speaker. That's why when you use diffusion, you have to be very cognizant about the distances involved between the diffuser and your ears. Because if you don't have enough distance for this lowest wavelength to run, you're going to get phase. It won't fully form. And that's not the goal of treatment. The goal of treatment is to eliminate phase, right? That's what we want to do. Diffusers have frequency response like a speaker. They're based on prime numbers, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23. There's a mathematical reason for that. We won't go into it with this video. Those of you that are interested in the math can look it up on the internet. Sound enters the diffuser and it's divided up. That's the easiest way to think about diffusion. It takes big sound, breaks it up into little pieces. It's not technically accurate way to say it. I get it. But for purposes of illustration and conversation competence and understanding, that's what goes on. It takes a large reflection, breaks it up into a series of smaller ones. Why does it do that? That's the way it's designed to work. And a smaller reflection is harder for our brain and hearing system to localize. We can't tell how far away the, the distance is. That's how you get a diffusion technology to make a small room sound larger. It's that non-localization of reflection. So that's the coal, and that's what a diffuser does. Sound enters the diffuser, it's divided into smaller. Spread out, it's based on the frequency response. I think a prime 13 has, I think 280 as the lowest, and then up to about 3,500 for the highest width. We use two inch well width because that gets us the 3,500. 
you get smaller than that, which you can, and extend the frequency response of the diffuser higher. But when you start making these wells one inches apart, it's hard for workers to get their fingers in there and secure all the pieces. I think our Prime 13 diffuser has 90 pieces. How do you get your fingers in there to secure all those parts together? So you have to be really, really concerned about frequency response. A vertical diffuser, one that's placed like this, diffuses sound in a horizontal direction. A horizontally placed diffuser, get out of the way here, diffuses sound in this direction. So you got vertical and horizontal diffusion, very powerful tool. So you really have two dimensions of diffusion. You have one dimensional, which is these are the vertical or the horizontal, and then you can combine, combine them together in sequences. And you've seen this a lot. Look at this photo here of a rear wall we did in a studio in California. You can see two dimensions of diffusion, horizontal and vertical. And that's the key. When do you use both? It's based on distance. It's based on usage of the room. What are you trying to accomplish? A vertical diffuser will spread sound out in a horizontal direction. It also increases resolution and the width of the sound stage and the depth and the separation between the instrument. So it adds a little bit of color, if you will, to the presentation value. Two-dimensional diffusion, we use a lot in recording studios where the mix engineer is three, four feet from the rear wall. The goal there is to minimize all reflections off the rear wall. So two-dimension diffusion will do that without adding any sort of color to the presentation value. And the mix engineer doesn't want that. He just doesn't want to hear that slap back from the rear wall. So we have the, a lot of flexibility. Like I said before, sound diffusers are a technology to make a small room sound larger. But there's a lot of prerequisites. There's a lot of requirements in your room that you have to have accomplished first before you bring diffusion in. I get calls every day from people. Well, I want to put diffusion in my room. And then I say, why? And their reasons don't really make any sense based on the technology itself and how it's going to perform. Plus, there's a lot of requirements. And I've done numerous videos on the five major requirements that you have before you introduce diffusion into your room. Reverb times have to be equal and balanced throughout the whole room. Decay rates have to be logarithmic. There's also many, many other requirements that you have. Diffusion can actually make your room sound worse if you haven't done your homework inside the room. They're great looking and they perform really well, but there's a lot of prerequisites before you use them. Sound diffusers, how do they work? I hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions, and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum, and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.